I had seen a few videos on YouTube, including the one referenced here, showing how to prepare hexamine nickel 2 chloride, and it seemed pretty straightforward, and it had a nice look to it, being this lavender purple color. The only problem is that I only have nickel sulfate in stock, and I didn't feel like ordering a whole bunch of nickel chloride just so I could make a few grams of this complex. So I got creative. But first things first. Everyone has their pet peeves, and one of mine, there are many, uh, is incorrect nomenclature. This is a tricky one, but when ammonia is a ligand, it's called amine with two M's. Amine with one M is a nitrogen atom as an organic functional group. While we're at it, there's a hot debate about whether to pronounce it ligand or ligand, and I'm just going to go with ligament, ligature, ligand. Okay, back to my problem. In other videos on YouTube, nickel chloride hexahydrate, which could also be called hexa aqua nickel 2 chloride, is reacted with concentrated ammonia and then the new coordination compound, hexamine nickel 2 chloride, is precipitated with acetone. I did find one video of the reaction using nickel sulfate instead of chloride, but the coordination compound has different properties, most notably a different color. So what clever chemistry trick could I pull to get the desirable chloride coordination compound without going out of my way to buy nickel chloride? Well, barium sulfate is almost completely insoluble, and I happen to have some barium chloride on the shelf. So if I were to calculate a perfectly stoichiometric ratio, I should have an almost quantitative yield of barium sulfate precipitate and a usable solution of nickel chloride. So that's what I've got here. I'm preparing two solutions, way more than 10 mils each, but with the masses of nickel sulfate and barium chloride shown on the previous slide. I'm shooting for a 0 0.01 mole scale so the volume doesn't matter too terribly much. After some gentle heating and a little patience, we're ready to go. Since I used more water than I originally intended, I'm going to transfer everything to a slightly larger beaker. As soon as the barium chloride goes in, you can see a very fine precipitate of barium sulfate. Since I'm going for quantitative yield, every last drop has to come out of the beaker. All right, gotcha. I'm gonna chill this down in the fridge for a little while to make sure I get the most barium sulfate to precipitate out as possible. It's probably unnecessary to do that, but I did it anyway. While I'm at it, I'm going to make the sulfate complex too. Here are 10 milliliters of one molar nickel sulfate solution. I'm going to add an excess of concentrated 14.3 molar ammonia solution, and right away you can see this deep royal blue color develop. That's going to go in the fridge for a little while too. I should also mention that I've placed some acetone into the freezer, so it's nice and chilled when it comes time to collect the coordination compounds. Okay, here we have the nickel chloride solution and barium sulfate precipitate. I'm going to use the finest filter paper I have because barium sulfate is notoriously difficult to filter. This is going to take a while, but I'm sure it will be worth the wait. I can already tell that the solution is a lighter green color. Nickel sulfate is an emerald green color, while nickel chloride is more of a Kelly green. So I feel like this is actually going to work. This is going to take a while to filter, so let's see what happens with the sulfate complex first. This bottle of acetone is just out of the freezer, and the dark blue solution has been in the refrigerator for a while. Hopefully this will increase the yield of the complex. As soon as I add the acetone, you can see the formation of a light blue precipitate. I'm going to keep adding acetone until I can do so without seeing any more precipitate form. Then, it's going to go back in the fridge. I'd like to make a quick safety point while I'm at it. I put this entire bottle of acetone, which was only about a quarter full, into the freezer. 
as soon as I took it out, I loosened the threads of the cap. Now this bottle is designed to deal with higher internal pressures than most bottles, but still, it's good practice because the freezing temperature vapors will expand as they come to room temperature. And since this was filmed in the middle of July, room temperature was quite different from freezer temperature. Fortunately, this precipitate settles pretty quickly, and that's helpful. After letting it settle for just a little bit, I would add more acetone. If new precipitate formed, I would keep adding acetone. Once I saw that no new precipitate formed, enough had been added, and it's time to put it back in the fridge to settle completely. I used about 20 milliliters of acetone. Okay, let's go back to the chloride while the sulfate chills. First, we'll put it into a beaker so it's easier to work with. I filtered and washed the barium sulfate precipitate into a separate test tube just in case it managed to get through the filter. I'm recombining that filtrate with the rest of the nickel chloride solution before adding the ammonia. And here it comes. Just about 6 milliliters, which is in excess. The problem is that the ammonia was measured a while ago and it was sitting out by a fan. I ended up adding another 3 milliliters in two portions, which was enough to clear the solution and get all the complex to dissolve. It's also worth mentioning that the color is definitely a few shades lighter than the nickel sulfate complex. Now this one's going to go back in the fridge for a while. Here's the sulfate complex after spending the night in the fridge. I add a few drops of acetone to make sure there's no further precipitate formation, and there isn't, so it's ready to filter now. Normally it's good practice to fix the filter paper to the funnel with a little water. In this case, that would be a bad idea. Acetone would be the best choice, but instead of using either, I opted for the hold and dump method, which is just as effective, even if it's slightly less professional. In addition, it would be completely disastrous to rinse out the beaker with water. I'm using more ice cold acetone for that as well. Next up, I'm going to precipitate out the chloride. Uh, apparently that's going to take a little bit more acetone. By adding the acetone, we're changing the polarity of the liquid phase. The complex is fairly soluble in water, but as acetone is added and the overall polarity decreases, the complex is less and less soluble. Once I get the bigger beaker, I go for broke and add tons of acetone. After a little settling time, it should come as no surprise that there is no further formation of precipitate on addition of more acetone. So this is going to go back in the fridge now too. Here's the mostly filtered sulfate complex, and you can see how wonderfully colorless the liquid phase is. I'm going to transfer the complex from the filter paper onto a glass dish to minimize loss of the product. Now we'll leave it to dry. I've got the chloride complex back out, and you can see the lavender color that I was hoping for. I hereby declare my creative synthesis a smashing success. We can't leave it at that though, so let's finish the workup by adding a ton more acetone. Why not? The liquid phase is still strongly colored, so this complex is definitely more soluble in the acetone water solvent than the sulfate complexes. Oh well, it's time to filter it and see what we get. And through the magic of editing, here's the last of it being filtered before washing the beaker with more acetone, of course. The color of the liquid is still very apparent, so that's going to constitute a loss. It's fine. I decided it's not worth the extra effort to try and concentrate the solution or evaporate it or whatever to try and get that last bit. The same as with the sulfate complex, I'm going to scrape the wet solid onto a glass dish for drying. Look at that color. Most nickel compounds are some shade of green and here I've just made two that aren't. That's pretty cool all by itself. Let's see what they look like dry.
Well, as they dry, there seems to be something amiss. The sulfate on the right is getting much darker, and the chloride on the left is turning blue in some parts. This could be a problem. Here we have the mostly dry sulfate complex after drying overnight, and it has this nice powder blue color. It doesn't seem like the fact that it was darkening was a big deal. I was only planning on looking at the product, not doing all this grinding when I did it, and that's why I'm not wearing any gloves. But I should be, because nickel compounds are at least slightly toxic, and they have been implicated as carcinogens. Rest assured, I'll be washing my hands thoroughly. The good news is the more I grind it, the better it looks. The final yield is 2.36 grams, which is an amazing 90%. So I'm extremely happy with this product. But despite this pleasant powder blue color, it's not the lavender chloride complex I set out to make. So let's check on that one, shall we? Yep, that's it. Nope. It's not even close to purple. Something went horribly wrong. In one of the videos I saw on YouTube, this happened to the residue on the filter paper as it dried. Unfortunately for me, it happened to the entire product. This isn't the complex for sure, and I don't even think it's nickel chloride. That's usually a brighter Kelly green color. This is dull, and the mass is far less than it should be. In a nutshell, I have no idea what happened but I know the procedure worked, so I'm gonna try it again, exactly as before, but improve the conditions for drying. This is the second batch, and that's an example of what it looks like when you do still need more acetone. I wanted to put that in there so you know what I meant when I said if you add acetone and get more precipitate, rather than just dumping in half the bottle. The first thing I'm doing differently in the workup is to rinse the filtrate thoroughly with ice-cold acetone. I'm hoping that will remove any excess water, which I think could be a likely culprit in turning my nice lavender complex into a nasty green goop. Acetone will also evaporate quicker, so I won't be blowing a fan across the complex overnight either. That was probably another mistake, but it worked fine for the sulfate complex. But this is the major difference. I'm going to use this dish to build a makeshift desiccator. It all starts with an inverted petri dish in a moat, if you will, of anhydrous calcium chloride to draw out the water from the precipitate. The complex is in the other half of the dish, and that gets put on top. Next, off it goes to sit for a few hours in a 110 degree Fahrenheit oven, also known as my back porch. As I mentioned earlier, this was filmed last July, so the porch was the perfect spot. Placing it into a hot and dry environment allows the water and acetone to vaporize quickly, which they did. It built up enough pressure to blow the cover off my desiccator. It was fine. No harm done. Alright, here we are a few hours later, and... Yes, it worked. I have a mostly dry, pale lavender mass that will need some diligent scraping. This is beautiful. The makeshift desiccator is my new favorite piece of equipment, and I'm going to use it a lot. I'm absolutely thrilled with this product. Now on to that scraping. So here are the final results. The chloride complex yielded only 1.33 grams, which is 56% of the expected value. It's clearly more soluble in the acetone water solvent though, so I think most of the loss happened there. The 90% yield on the sulfate complex makes up for it. As for the green stuff, well, it's not that ugly of a color. There's not very much of it, and I didn't even bother to weigh it. The main takeaway from this is that using a barium compound and nickel sulfate does work to form the hexamine nickel 2 complex of whatever the barium salt anion was, which got my beaker turning. That's my brand new turn of phrase for thinking up a creative idea, by the way. Anyway, I have some barium nitrate. 
can I make the hexamine nickel 2 nitrate complex too? This is a solution of barium nitrate, and I added the nickel sulfate directly to it. After leaving it stir for a bit, I put it in the fridge and filtered just like I did before. Et voila, this is now a solution of nickel nitrate. Let's add the ammonia and see what happens. Well, something happened. My intention is to treat this the same way as the other experiments. Refrigerate, add cold acetone, refrigerate again, filter, and dry in my new favorite desiccator. This is after the first refrigeration, before adding the acetone, and there's already some solid precipitate. I decided to add the acetone anyway and see what happens. In an unprecedented show of restraint, I added acetone dropwise to the solution, and nothing happened. So I decided to skip ahead to filtration. Clearly though, while it isn't as soluble as the other complexes, it's still soluble enough to impart this intense blue color, which, by the way, I quite like. The solubility is going to compromise yield, but I don't really care at this point. I just want to see how different it is in color to the other complexes. And I'm excited that the barium trick works for more than just chloride. Those are the only two barium salts I have in stock though, so that's all I can try. I didn't wash the precipitate at all, by the way. Given the obvious solubility in water and unknown solubility in acetone, I figured it wasn't worth the risk. But look at the wet color, greenish blue, a stark contrast to the royal blue solution. Let's see how it looks after it spends the night in the desiccator. I decided to leave it on the paper this time and I'll just scrape it off of that later. I wanted to see if I could squeeze any more precipitate out of the filtrate, so I added some cold acetone, and pretty much nothing happened. Rather than keep adding acetone, I put it in the freezer for far too long, and still, not even a little bit of precipitate formed. So whether the solubility increases, decreases slightly, or stays the same, adding acetone has no effect to increase the yield. All right, after some time drying, let's check in on our new complex. Well, there's not much, but it is a distinct color, so we made something. As I said, there was so little to begin with, I left it on the paper. Graciously, it scrapes off very easily as this dark green-blue powder. There was a total of 0.15 grams recovered, which is slightly less than an abysmal yield. We're talking single digits, but it worked. So here's the family of nickel complexes. Other channels have done the chloride or the sulfate. Nobody has done the nitrate. And here at House Lab, you get all three for the price of one plus some weird crap that can't be identified, and a nifty way to make a DIY desiccator. Now that's value. I filmed this almost a year ago, so obviously I've been a little behind. Life got in the way of making videos for a while, but nowadays I have the time to do what I enjoy doing the most. Look for steadily increasing uploads, but I don't want to be that guy who promises a big comeback and then disappears forever. Just know I'm working on it. If you've come this far, why not subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I upload next time. While you're at it, like the video and leave a comment. I'd love to know what you got out of this video and if there are any experiments you'd like to see. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.